What's going on, my game maker enthusiasts? It's Real Touch GML here, and today I'm presenting a new game that we're creating, which is a tower defense game. So I've went ahead and made this game beforehand, and you're seeing it right here on the left-hand side. This is going to be a three-part series, and basically what we're going to go through is creating the basic core foundation of the game. So the simple rules of tower defense, right? So you have a path, you have enemies that come down this path, and the tower shoot them, and you don't want the enemies to get to the end. All right. Very, very simple rules. So I'm gonna actually do something a little bit different here. I'm gonna go into Notepad on my right-hand side while I let the game play out on the left-hand side. And we're gonna design the game from a developer's perspective. So we all know the basic rules of tower defense. You know, you have the path, you have the towers, you shoot them, and that's it, right? But what are what separates our game from the others, right? So let's figure out, okay, what happens when you go to a next wave? Uh, what kind of different towers do we want in the game? We're gonna design that out right now, just so you can kind of see that process. So one thing that we're gonna wanna figure out is, okay, um, enemy progression, right? So how do we want the enemies to progress wave to wave? So we can do a number of different things, right? But uh, one of the main things would probably be more health. All right, so we're going to want to give the enemies more health each turn because each turn your or wave you're creating new towers and the enemies need to get harder. What's another set of progression that we can use with this enemy? So we can say maybe a faster spawn rate, so they'll be more clumped together, right? Um, we also maybe want to add one enemy per wave. So if you get to wave twenty, you say you start out with five enemies, you're now at twenty-five enemies. All right. Um, Another thing we can do is maybe they have a faster speed. So each wave, the enemies have faster and faster speeds. Um, these are all things that we can add into the game. Let's look at our towers now. So what are our towers gonna do? You know, we can have all these different cool lightning towers, uh, bazooka towers. Uh, if you, anyone's ever played monkey tower defense, you know, you have the super monkey. But we're gonna, we're gonna build out a couple basic towers here and they're just gonna have basic attributes to them. So for example, let's have our first tower, which will be our, um, our gray uh, tower that costs the least amount of money. Let's just make it an average tower, right? So it has medium range and a medium fire rate. The way this game is designed out is the there is no damage for the bullets. So now you can easily, and I'll show you how to do it, implement different bullets into the games where towers can shoot different bullets to give bigger damage rates. I'm simply just working with the attributes of range and fire rate with these towers. All right, so our second tower can be, let's say, short range and uh, with a faster fire rate, right, or a quick fire rate. All right, so that's going to be uh, short range with quick fire rate. And then to uh, invert that, we're going to give one with long range and a slow fire rate. All right, so they cover more of the map but it's not shooting as much, okay? So these are gonna be the basic towers and progression rules that we're gonna follow when developing this game. All right, so here we are in Game Maker Studio 2. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my rooms here. Let's go to room zero. And what I'm gonna do is change the width and height. So I'm gonna make it 640 by 480. Now this is just my preference. This is the game uh, size that I wanna have. If you don't wanna have the size, you definitely don't need to. What we're doing here can be equipped with any sort of room size. So I'm gonna go over to options, main, and I'm also gonna change my game's frames per second to 60. This gives for smoother gameplay. Usually games play at 60 frames per second. I recommend 60 for uh, smoother gameplay. All right, so there we go. So we've got our room, we've got our frames set. Now let's go ahead and start building the actual level. Now typically, in game development, you don't build the level first. You want to build all of the logic in the game. We want to start off with a very basic room where we can then add into it. So the towers, all of that sort of stuff, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a sprite. Actually, I'm going to create a group. I'm going to name it textures. And I'm going to create a quick sprite. And I'm going to make it 96 whoops, by 32. And basically what I'm doing here is this is gonna be the texture group for our tile set that we're gonna put in the game. So how you're seeing the path and grass actually laid out is just a tile set. 
So I'm just going to build the parts for that tile set. So in the image editor here, I'm just going to create a square that's 32 by 32. All right. And then let's, I'm going to create another one here. Actually, I'm going to use a different color. There we go. And then another color here. So these are going to be, this is essentially three 32 by 32 sprites. So in tile sets with the game maker, the first one needs to be blank. The second and third slot are going to be the grass and dirt path uh, pictures or textures. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in and select it like a green. I'm gonna bring down the darkness just a little bit. Maybe pop a couple uh, little grass dots in here. All right. So now I'm gonna select this. We're gonna create the dirt. So I'm gonna bring it down in darkness. And then just to keep it congruent, we're gonna go ahead and place a couple of these down as well. All right, so that's our very basic texture sheet for our landscape. So I'm just gonna name this uh, S tiles. All right, and then I'm gonna go down on the right-hand side here and create a new tile set. And I'm gonna select the sprite that we just created. On the right hand side, I'm going to set the tile width and tile height to 32 by 32. This is essentially making it so that it separates each, pieces, each piece into 32 by 32 so we can use it that way. All right, and I'll name this T uh, tiles. So now let's go ahead and go into our room here. And what we're going to do is we are going to add a new tile layer. All right, and here we're going to select the tiles. And now we can simply take this and uh, drag it and fill it everywhere. So I'm going to fill it with grass. Oh, and it looks like uh, actually making the tiles is wrong. Let's see here. Let's edit this real quick. Yep, we were one pixel off. All right. So then I'm going to take my drawing tool here. And I'm just going to draw in, and we did the same thing for, <laughs> for our dirt. Let's go ahead and take that. Perfect. All right. So now let's go ahead and just draw in a path that we want our enemies to go around. All right. So let's see here. Very basic path. kind of make it look the same and this should be lined up actually so there you go there's our path this is uh, going to be the path that the enemies follow all right so how do they actually follow the path and we're actually going to be use something called paths in game maker so what I'm going to do on the left hand side here is I'm going to go ahead and create a new path layer all right and here we're going to select the path and we're going to create a new path and you can keep everything here the same and what we're going to do is we're just going to basically click right up here right before our path actually starts this is where the enemy is going to be created now you can see it's a little off centered so if you click down here in our grid x you can actually select that to be eight and you can get it right in the center there all right so let's actually let's make the y eight as well so now we can drag down to the center of that sprite. Oops. There we go. And whoops, messed something up there. And now we're just gonna click all around the path we just created. to create a very simple path system. Okay, so now this, what we can do is we can assign any object to follow this path and it's gonna do it pretty much, uh, it's gonna look great. All right, so let's go ahead and in our sprites create an enemy. So I'm gonna add another group. 
and we're going to name it enemies. And here I'm going to create S enemy. I'm going to edit it and make it a 32 by 32 sprite. Here we go. And we'll just make it look like that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and create an object. And I'm going to create our enemy. So O enemy. Select the sprite. And then I'm going to create another object. And this is going to be called O spawn. And essentially what O spawn is going to do is it's going to control all of the attributes for our enemy. So it's going to have one main controller for the uh, health points in the game, the speed, um, and the level progress, as well as it's going to actually spawn our enemies. Okay. So if we go into the code and the create event, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple variables and this is going to be spawn amount. And this is going to be how many enemies we're actually spawning for each wave. So we'll say five to begin with. That's going to be our starting amount. Our spawn underscore count is going to be zero. What this variable does is going, it's going to track how many we've actually spawned in the wave. And then once it hits the number five, it's going to stop spawning. So it's just a tracker. And then our spawn rate is going to equal one multiplied by room speed, which is essentially one second. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's, it's again, just pretty much once, ev once every second, there's going to be an enemy that spawns. All right. So here, what we can do is set alarm zero to equal one. And if we go into alarm zero here, we can go ahead and start writing some code. So why did we call alarm zero? Alarm zero is basically like a timer. So the event gets called every time this timer reaches zero or whatever it may be. Right, so if we set it to one, that's one millisecond. So in the create event in one millisecond, we're actually going to call this event and any code inside of it. What we can normally do is set alarm zero to equal spawn rate, which is what we are going to end up doing. Um, but we wanna start spawning them right away. We don't wanna wait a second for our, uh, your enemies to start spawning. So in alarm zero, we're gonna say if spawn underscore count is less than our spawn amount, we're going to instance create depth at x, y, depth is negative one with our O enemy. We're going to increase our spawn count variable, and then we're gonna set alarm zero to equal spawn rate so it can keep going through this code every second. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're creating a basic if statement. So we're checking, hey, is our spawn count variable less than our spawn amount variable? This is at zero and this is at five. So yes, it is less than that. So we're going to create our enemy. Then we're going to add to this spawn count, hit alarm zero back to spawn rate, which is one second. That's what we made the variable. So once it comes back here, it's gonna say now, if one is less than five, then we're going to create another enemy and its spawn counts going to increase again and it's going to go through this process five times or however much our spawn amount our spawn amount is okay so if we go into our room here we go to our resources and we put our spawn well let's make sure we're on the instances layer we put our spawn into the game now actually let's go ahead and we want to make sure it's completely centered we want to make sure it's completely centered with our path so let's put this to eight as well. There we go. I'll change this back to 32, 32. So now it's going to create those enemies right on top of that layer. So in our O enemy, we're going to go into the create event. And now we're going to just initialize a couple things. Now, like I said before, our O spawn object actually controls the health points and the speed of our enemies. So we're gonna go ahead and into the create event of our O spawn, we're gonna set up those values. So we're gonna set global.hp to equal 100. We're gonna set global.speed to equal one. And we'll set global.level to equal one as well while we're here. All right, so HP is gonna be the health points for our enemy. The SPD is gonna be our speed. Now I don't do speed because that's a built-in variable in GameMaker and we can't actually use that but speed uh, is going to be in control of how fast we're moving on the path. So why do we make this global? Because every enemy that gets spawned with that wave is gonna have these same attributes here, okay? 
uh, it just just making it global makes it easier so we can just access it and it doesn't mess with any of the other code that we're using all right so if we go up to the o enemies create event we can go ahead and start everything out so we're gonna say path start and it's gonna be path zero that we created uh, the speed is going to be global dot speed the end action is going to be zero. We don't want it to do anything. And absolute is going to be true. All right, so that's going to start us out on that path with the actual speed itself. We're then going to create a variable called HP, and it's going to equal global.hp. So since this is in the create event of the enemy, it, its initial values are coming from the wherever the values are when it's created here. So wherever these values are, when this is created, that's going to be the value. So even though this is going to change with our enemy progression that we built, if it's already spawned, it's not going to change. So we could spawn an enemy with our global.hp equal to 100, and then right after it spawns, set global.hp equal 110, and this would not change because this value has already been set. All right. So let's go ahead and run the game. And actually, you know what? It's a little bit off because we need to center the origin on our uh, enemy here. So just go up here, middle center, and we're good to go. So now you can see the enemies coming out on the path. And there's five of them. And they're just going to be going on through. So that's going to be it for today. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Visit CodingMadeSimple.com to learn more about programming. And I'll see you guys next episode. Peace.